So I have here a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig model, with a little fan on it, because these do run a little hot, and it's got Kali Linux on this. Now, why did I do this? Well, after my video I did about X2Go working so well on a Raspberry Pi 4, I was pretty impressed, and said, you know, I wonder how well it runs Kali Linux with X2Go, and throw one more piece of the pie in here, you know, piece of the pie, haha, <laughs> okay. Uh, zero tier is also loaded on here as well. Now, what's the use case for this, as I like to say? The idea was to have a box that I could easily do remote reconnaissance with. So if I wanted to be inside of a network or uh, loan this to a client or drop this off with someone's permission and do some testing inside of the network, but not have to deal with firewall settings or if the IP address changes internally of either the box itself or their external IP address changes on their WAN side, have a system that always connects. Now, I've done an in-depth video I'll leave a link to of Zero Tier. It is an amazing open source SD-WAN solution that solves that problem by essentially adding a static network address to the inside of this, as in it adds another adapter that no matter what path it has for the internet, even if it switches networks, you always can get back to the zero tier address on there. So while this is booting up because it's off right now and it boots up in about 30 seconds and another 30 seconds or so to connect zero tier, we're going to take a moment to thank a sponsor of the channel. So first, as you can see, it is showing that my Kelly Pi is offline. My laptop is online. And let's talk about IT Pro TV while we wait for it to boot. IT Pro TV is binge worthy content for IT training. Now this is a sponsor of the channel that we reached out to because we were already using IT Pro TV uh, for internal training for our other LTS technicians here. Uh, and relevant to this, if you're wondering what kind of training you offer, I realized they had pen testing training. They have like nine hours just on this particular course of it. So if you're looking to get into pen testing, you're like, hey, cool, you showed me how to load Kelly and Linux, but now what? Well, this is the now what. There's an entire course you have on, you know, pen testing, injection, Linux privilege, esc privilege escalation. I don't say that as well as they say it, uh, but they have all kinds of courses uh, outlining everything from Contia, Microsoft, Cisco, Linux, Apple, AWS, Agile, all kinds of uh, content here. It's an amazing selection. And with our offer code, you get 30% off. And you can even start a free seven day, no risk trial. So uh, it is a pretty amazing service with a extensive library of things you can learn. All right, back over here to the content. Where do we get this from? Let's start from the very beginning. So this is Kali Linux. You download this from Offensive Security and they have a specific build for the Kali Linux Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 4. Like I said, we're using Raspberry Pi 4, the latest, greatest, fastest one out there. And let's go see, it should be online now. Oh, and it is. Did all this in real time here, man. It does takes no time at all to uh, boot this thing up. So I'd say from the time you hit go till uh, it's booted up and connected and connected to zero tier so you can get back into it if it's in another network, and in this instance it is, uh, it boots up rather quick. So let's talk about this. Also, other thing I want to mention, this is slid aside, so no, my public IP address isn't exposed, but yes, the network ID is exposed. That's why this is called the YouTube testing network. If you're already familiar with zero tier, you know the two things you need is one, access to this number right here that's generated for each new network you generate in zero tier. And then once you do the join, you check the authorize button to authorize that device on here. So uh, you have half the information you need. I would just have to click authorize and you could then connect to my Raspberry uh, Pi running Kelly Linux as well. So uh, I, I do have this special network I set up for. So if you try to join it, I'll probably deny you and block you if you try to do it too many times. Just throwing it out there because uh, this happened before when I did the zero tier video, which is why I create different networks for my YouTube videos. All right, now let's go through the settings on this. First, talk about my laptop. So this is the zero tier address, 10.147.17.51. This is my laptop address, 10.147.17.72. How does that work? Well, once you have zero tier installed, and I added and joined my laptop to the network, it is this 10.147.17.72. This is my laptop. My laptop's actual address that it was given when it attached to the Wi-Fi was 3.18. So let's go over and we're gonna SSH into the zero tier box. Well, the Kali Linux Pi, whoops, running zero tier. 
It'll take a second, no route to host. It takes a second to, it booted up, it did not completely route. So it sees it online, so let's go ahead and ping it. Give it a second, see if it shows up. Oh, okay, just in time. We've got this one high ping right here. Now if we SSH in, hey look, it worked. Zero tier takes sometimes a couple minutes depending on how long it takes to establish the connection. So about 30 seconds, maybe a little bit longer from the time I started uh, the device till it was online. Um, and this will occur if zero tier senses an IP address change, it will reestablish connection, but there is a little bit of time. I would say no more than if it's having trouble establishing up to two minutes, but generally speaking, within one minute it's connected. Now, let's look at this. This is on, here's ETH0, so that's what we have plugged in on here. And it is at, I'm gonna move this over a little bit, 172.69.16.69.14. And the zero tier address was 10.147.51. And this is how my laptop is communicating with it via that address. So when we looked at where I'm logged in from, you can see that my laptop came in from the zero tier address. So we're not establishing a connection through the network and not to mention my laptop is on a separate network. And if we were to try to ping my 192 and 683.18 on my laptop, you notice they are blocked. I have firewall rules set to segregate these two devices away from each other, but they're able to get to each other because of zero tier. And like I said, that's the deployment use case. Now, everything we did, whoops, um, to do this is pretty straightforward. So. First, we'll start with what we loaded on here. So we'll move this over a little more. And uh, apt get install bash completion. So from the, other than doing the updates, apt get update and I have to upgrade to make sure I have the latest everything on here after I downloaded the install files uh, and imaged it. Then I installed bash completion. I did add that. I wanted to mention that because that's something I was surprised Kali Linux doesn't come with out of the box, but bash completion is so when we type things like apt get install, we can type and it'll auto complete options like Wireshark, WireGuard, tools, etc., cetera, uh, we, using tab completion. Next thing, apt get install x2go server. I actually tab a couple times. There's a few different options here, client, server, desktop, but we installed the server on here um, just to get it so we have the base that we need so we can connect to it and have a graphical interface. Then we use TASK SEL. And what this does is makes it really easy so you don't have to grab all the functions, but it opens up this so you can choose XFCE. Now I pointed out before, this will work with the LXDE, LXQT, or Mate desktop perfectly fine. And it works horribly with KDE Plasma. It's just not fast enough for that. But this allows you to really quickly go through, well, as quick as a Raspberry Pi can handle it and as quick as you can download it, uh, get that environment set up and running. So that was done. And I will mention that I did use my dot files. I do like my customized command prompt that I've been using for a while. I'll leave a link to that below. It's over on my GitHub. So that was installed in here. And of course we did install to make sure that works. We do have git installed. Once you're done, whoops, actually I did not want that. Clear, typos today. Then we have to get zero tier loaded. And one thing about zero tier that it does not have an install script that will automatically download and install on Kali Linux. So what we had to do was go to download.zerotier.com, Debian, Buster, Pool, Main, Z, Zero Tier 1, Zero Tier 1. Okay, I'm not going to make you remember that. I will put a link to that uh, below where you can get the specific build for the ARM Raspberry Pi. Last piece of that is making sure it's enabled on startup. So if you do update dash RCD zero tier one enable, like I said, I'll leave these in the uh, notes file down in the description below, but this will allow you to uh, have it run on startup because that's an important thing in case you ever deploy this, like you get it all configured in your office network or your home network in your lab and it works, but then you take it somewhere else. You're like, hold on, it's not connecting. What am I doing? Uh, it doesn't, when you do the install, it doesn't have it set in startup by default. Once you do that, you go to zero tier, CLI, join, and we join the network name, which is right here. Whoops. Just do a uh, quick copy. And of course, I've did this already on my laptop and on this. You would zero tier join, and this is the network uh, that you want to join. Once you do that, it shows up in the list over here, down below. It's already in here. And then you just check this little box that turns it green and authorized and it puts it online. So you've added the zero tier device. Then you may want to say, where did you deploy this at? And we'll say LTS office. And this is how you could have like a whole bunch of these pies 
scattered around at different places, and it's probably a great idea to label them so you know which offices are at. Now, what can we do from here? Well, we have the full power of Kali Linux right at our fingertips here. Sudo, actually we don't need sudo because we're running as root. Apt-get install, let's see, uh, I think Wavemon works for Raspberry Pis, let's find out. I haven't tested this part yet. And we want to scan the Wi-Fi. Now this is plugged in via hardline and we have this in someone else's network so we want to do something like look at some of the Wi-Fi. And Wavemon is kind of a neat way to do that. And you can see it works reasonably fast when it's downloading and installing things. Uh, so that was done. Wavemon. And let's do a scan. And it, there we go. We can see the different Wi-Fi networks on here. So we can start doing different Wi-Fi testing, understanding what networks are on here, what conflicts there may be. Uh, and it's nice to have this on the inside of a network uh, that you maybe have at a client's because you're trying to troubleshoot something. You're like, let's look at it from a external perspective. Now, the real benefit and one of the things that we really like with Raspberry Pi is being able uh, in Kali Linux is going to be enumerating a network, especially at a new client. So if you're prospecting, you have to do some uh, testing to figure out what's on their network, you may want to scan it. That takes a long time. Now, a couple tools, of course, uh, ZenMap is one of my favorites, which is NMap with a, a UI interface. Well, that's why I threw on X2Go with this set up. So this is attaching and we're going to go ahead and just start a new session. I have a couple sessions that I already had running on here. So it'll, it will, it sees them running. There are actually some sessions I expired from when I rebooted. Um, we'll go ahead and go here. And we'll pull up, because I already have this installed. I just did app get install ZenMap, which NMAP is already installed. So we'll go over here, and it's under uh, Internet, ZenMap. And this is uh, right here. We're going to go ahead and kick off an intense scan. We want to just start finding everything. It's going to be a while. So what we're going to do here is uh, let it do its thing, and you can just close this and then resume it later when you want to see the results. Like I said, this is the big advantage of having like a nice UI on this where we can just go back in here, close it, and then go back to it later. And even if the IP address changes, it doesn't matter. We're always attaching to the zero tier address. So we're going to go back in here now. It should be session 55 because that's the one we, that's the top one on there. Go back into it. Reestablish the connections and away we go. So it's finding all the devices I have on this 172 network, scanning them, and then from there I have all the other tools. You have vulnerability analysis tools. It only has NMAP loaders, not a lot loaded by default on this. And, uh, you know, it takes a second for the screen to refresh in case you're wondering what was happening there because I just changed the resolution. But it's going through and gathering information. We can also do some DNS analysis. Uh, there's the port scanner. It has uh, the harvester already loaded, but like I said, this is Kali Linux, and there's a whole lot of different tools depending on what your use case is, whether you want to start doing application testing versus just what we're doing here is network enumeration to start scan the network. But this is a really handy tool to be able to do this because I didn't require me to forward any ports or set up any special things on the particular network that this is on, and it gets you pivoted right inside there. So with no more than a USB-C power cord and a network interface that you could attach it to on their network, you're in, as they like to say, and you can start doing all this different testing and uh, reconnaissance or even just enumerating network. Like, I mean, please don't plug this into this network you don't have permission to, uh, but this is a real handy device that without having a whole lot, put it in the wiring closet, stick it in there, stick it in the top shelf, set it on top of their switch even, you know what I mean? You're not talking about a, uh, a whole lot of room. It'll fit right in the back of the rack to be able to go, I'm gonna leave this here, come get, come back, get it in a couple days, but you're inside the network where you can start doing the network enumeration, start doing evaluations uh, for what's on their network, and then even have a little bit more power to run things graphically like Wireshark to start looking at if you did some PCAP files and gathered some more data, uh, be able to really do some analysis all right there on a box that's in their network uh, that you have access to very easily and not have to worry about, like I said, any of that tricky setup of do I have to forward a port? What if they're, uh, they don't have static IPs assigned and it changes? What if the IP address of this changes even? 
no problem. Zero tier, as soon as it establishes connection to the internet, the zero tier connection re gets us reestablished and you're back in and you can monitor it that way. So hopefully this was enlightening. These are pretty cool tools out there. Uh, I have a whole in-depth video on X2Go if you want to learn more about that. I have a more in-depth video that I'll also leave a link to for Zero Tier, uh, which is a tool that I've used quite a few times to you know, solve a solution uh, for clients when you need something to be dynamic and being able to access it, or even in my case on my laptop. Uh, no matter where I take my laptop, whether it's here at my office or I take it to some coffee shop or a McDonald's, as long as I can get Wi-Fi, I can connect right to zero tier with no other changes and connect to all the Raspberry Pis that I may have deployed under that particular account. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.